our longest trusted English newspaper since 1898. Now available digitally. Computer, order the Manila Times Digital Edition. Subscribed. Get the Manila Times Digital Edition for less than 2 pesos and 50 centavos per day when you sign up for one year. The Manila Times, new source of choice, trusted since 1898. Greetings and salutations. Thank you for lending an ear to the Voice of the Times. This Tuesday, May 3, 2022. For today's editorial, Marawi's Long Road to Recovery. What started out on May 23, 2017 as a military operation to capture a prominent Islamist terrorist leader in Marawi City escalated into a five-month battle that leveled most of the city and displaced 98% of its populace. The fighting in Marawi was by far the country's longest and bloodiest urban battle since the Second World War. Almost a thousand Islamist fighters were killed along with 168 government troops and 87 civilians. Almost all the buildings in the main battle area were either damaged or destroyed following the street battles and bombardment as security forces tried to flush out the well-entrenched enemy. Close to 200,000 Marawi residents fled the city, most of them sheltering at evacuation camps in nearby towns. For the moment, they were safe. But the questions that lingered in their minds were, when could they return to their homes and how would they rebuild their lives? In April 2018, residents were allowed back to the city and a month later, 70% of the population had returned home. The government began to set up the framework for the Herculean task of rebuilding Marawi. The National Economic and Development Authority and Task Force Bangun Marawi estimated that reconstruction would take up to 80 million pesos. There was an infectious energy to help rebuild Marawi. Fundraisers such as concerts were organized by non-government groups. Pledges of humanitarian aid flowed in. The European Union promised 850,000 euros. Turkey focused on food aid for displaced Marawi school children. Malaysia planned on food and medical supplies. The United States delivered almost $20 million worth of drinking water, hygiene kits, evacuation shelter materials, and for programs to protect displaced women and children. It looked as if Marawi was on its way to swift recovery. But five years later, the government's efforts to make Marawi rise as a prosperous city again, as promised by President Rodrigo Duterte, appear to have lost traction. In July last year, the chairman of Task Force Bangon Marawi, Eduardo del Rosario, reported that the rehabilitation effort was 65% complete. Del Rosario considered this rate as satisfactory and assured the public that most, if not all, of the ongoing projects will be finished by either December of this year or well within the term of the current administration. 65% means rehabilitation is just a little over half complete, four years after it was launched. It's definitely not something to crow about. There were also claims that the task force did not consult regularly with local organizations that were involved in rebuilding Marawi. The head of one such group, the Kalimudan Saranao Foundation, said the government was building a city not for us, but to please outsiders. Another civic leader questioned the building of large-scale structures that he said was not in keeping with the residents' faith, culture, and history. Last week, President Duterte signed Republic Act or RA-11696 or the Marawi Siege Victims' Compensation Act. The law mandates the government to compensate the kin of civilians who were killed during the Battle of Marawi, as well as those whose properties were destroyed in the fighting. A Marawi Compensation Board will be created to supervise the distribution of compensation. But first, the Implementing Rules and Regulations or IRR must be promulgated before the end of the Duterte administration on June 30 to determine the intended beneficiaries and how much they will be receiving. June 30 is the crucial date. If there is no IRR by then, the law's implementation could be set back. The new administration may not consider RA-11696 a priority and shelve it indefinitely. That would be tragic. The people of Marawi waited almost six years for the government to deliver on its promises to help them rebuild their lives. Without the money, compensating the residents will be nothing but cheap words. One dispirited local leader lamented, The fate of Marawi's residents should not be left in the hands of a new leadership that may not have the sense of urgency to act on their plight. And that's the editorial for Tuesday, 
May 3, 2022. For more news and information, get a copy of the Manila Times on print, subscribe to our digital edition, or log on to www.manilatimes.net. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and listen to The Voice of the Times.